The sales job always starts with selling ourselves on our own value. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you were talking about just if people are feeling stuck or frozen or what do I do? Um, I think, you know, one thing they can do is they can, you can go on the path to discover your unique value. Even if you're already out there with a super successful business, you might go through this little mini course and find some a gem that you didn't realize, it, but like it gets illuminated for you. Um, and the other kind of side door that I found with this idea is, uh, is the idea of following your inspirations, taking inspired action. All right. So hello, Lisa. Ah. Hey, Joe. Wow, look at us. Why don't you say some words of wisdom about what do you think of Lisa before I even introduce Lisa? Well, I love Lisa. This is, this is great. This is one of my favorite people ever. And Why? so this is, a, uh, this is a good time. Why is she one of your favorite right. people? Because anybody who embraces their sassiness like that, Lisa Sasevich, and she really owns the whole sassiness of Sasevich. It's, I've known her to be nothing but super sassy, and I love her. So that this is, is great. great. I'm that looking to start a watch party here while this is all happening. First off, everyone, uh, wherever you're at in the world, we hope you are doing as well as you can possibly be in the midst of all of uh, some of the crazy times. And uh, just to kind of bring everyone up to speed, uh, me and Lisa did a Facebook Live about a week ago. She had a brand new book come out called Meant for More. And so we decided let's do a longer, uh, more extended version because people really found it really valuable. And so I'm going to introduce her and then we're going to get into some great discussion and we're doing a I Love Marketing podcast live while we're doing a Facebook live while we're it's doing so it on exciting. Saturday. Yeah. But you know what I love about doing this video version is we could play a little known game that we don't get to play very often, but we could play Guess Who's Wearing Pants. <laughs> I don't, I'm not even going to think about you, Dean. I don't even want to go there. That's not like... Are, are we all going to just pan down and then pan out? Is that no, how? no, no, no. Stay Some of us are. the podcast, you'll find out who's wearing pants. That's right. Stay, stay <laughs> tuned. Stay tuned for the big reveal <laughs> right after the podcast. Yes. That is comedy. All right. So let me read this real quick and then we'll get into it. Inside every one of us is a feeling that just won't go away. The internal knowing that we are met for more. Lisa Sasevich had that feeling and used it to propel her into a life of abundance and contribution beyond her wildest dreams. She went from being fired from her dream job the night before Christmas Eve to building a home-based business that generated over $40 million in sales, all with two young children in tow. She's known by many as the queen of sales conversion and has taught over 15,000 mission-driven entrepreneurs in 134 different countries how to sell without being pushy or salesy. Today, Lisa's here to share what she calls her meant for more formula, so that you can use the tools she discovered to discover and, and own your unique value, make more money, and make the difference you know you are here to make. Hmm. So, yeah. So, Lisa, what else didn't I say about you that everyone needs to know to describe who well, you are? And the end with, you... I'm the one wearing pants, so we're going to save that for later, right? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I want to say uh, that I am innovating today with you, so I love that. You know, by the time this is being heard on the podcast, it'll be all podcast ready. But it's uh, it's super cool. We're broadcasting live on the I Love Marketing page, and uh, you know, Joe and I, in the middle of just wanting to, you know, give and and provide some 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 direction, some possibilities for our audiences, our you know, the people that that you guys that that, that we get to uh, to to touch, and is is that we decided let's have a watch party from my community to the I Love Marketing page and do this live. So I think there's an awesome innovation going on right now. You know, we're, we're, we're having all these creative ideas happen in the middle of quarantine is the time that we are, you know, doing this broadcast. And I haven't done this before, but to have my community invited on over to, you know, watch an interview with me on someone else's, in someone else's community. But what I love about it and why I want to do it with you guys is because, you know, this is Joe Polish and Dean Jackson. Like it doesn't get much better than this when it comes to marketing. Obviously this is the I love marketing podcast, but over on the sassy side of we've got, you know, sassy, it happens to be my last name, but it also is an acronym for sales, authenticity and success. So this is kind of like, you know, the sales chocolate in the marketing peanut butter. Um, right. <laughs> right. Our sales uh, world getting to come on over and, and really join in on what's happening here at I love marketing. So I think it's super cool. And I just want to say thanks for, trying something 
something new and innovative today. <laughs> yeah. well, absolutely. Thank you. And, and by the way, you know, I mean, part of it, we were talking before we started recording uh, about how we all tend to be more busy right now Ooh. in spite of, you know, we're at home. And you even mentioned, Lisa, about typically dr- the time driving to the gym and everything like that, that you're not, now we're not doing. Um, so, you know, how have you been dealing with the, uh, you know, this pandemic crisis and, you know, what have you been doing in your, your business that's different aside from the fact that you just launched your book? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's a fascinating because I, for the last decade, um, we have been teaching people how to sell without being salesy. And I, about a little over a year ago, started to really reflect on what have I learned from all of our live audiences and people that we've mentored over the last 10 years. And that's where the book got born. It was just kind of what I see in their eyes when they come to our events, what I see in my own eyes when I look in the mirror. Um, And really for so many people that I've had the privilege to meet through Genius Network as well, is that there is this internal feeling that we are meant for more, you know, especially in the entrepreneurial space, that our work could be helping more people, that things that we've learned and that we know could be helping more people. And so, you know, I, I have been really just feeling super blessed that it just, you know, this book was supposed to come out a year ago and I pushed it back because I got what I'll now call the, you know, hindsight is crystal clear. I'll now call it the meant for more feeling that like I needed some white space that I wanted to make a little more room for love and for my family. My kids were both turning teens. They're 13, 16 now. And so I was going through a big downshift. And I just couldn't see, you know, really giving all my heart to launching a book that is my heart in, at the same time. So I talked to Hay House Publishing. They said they were super, super like, hey, you know, we are a personal development <laughs> publisher after all. Um, and they were launching their business side. So this is a straddle book. It's full of personal development and business development, which with sales, they really do have to go together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's all about like what the, what what's going on in your, in your mind? Where are you with what your value is? So they pushed it back a year and just, you know, ironically that launch date happens right here in the middle of the quarantine. And, you know, I, I, I realized like if I were locked in a room and said, Lisa, take what, you know, the, the best of what you learned from the last 10 years, how can people figure out how to make money with what they know, what they already know, And if you could give the steps, you know, and just like help people now, whether it's because they want to make a bigger difference or they need to pay their rent or both, um, you know, just could you give it to us quick and straight and in a simple formula, like this would have been the book. Mm. So, you know, the the timing feels very divine. I feel like like a responsibility to just get it out, share it. And um, and yeah, so, so how I've been coping and what I've been doing in my business is launching a book that needs to ship mostly from Amazon in the middle of Amazon only shipping essentials is definitely a new terrain. And um, one of the things that I've seen with entrepreneurs that we've helped over the years is that the biggest breakthroughs have seemed to come at these really, these times where you feel really squeezed, like a moment like, like that where you're launching a book, but is Amazon going to ship it? And then you turn to your own work, be it mindset work or relationship work or financial work. Or, so in my case, I kind of like, I opened to meant for more, you know, the, the fourth step is called, you know, invite pursuit with an irresistible offer. And I just thought, okay, well, if I was, there was some information I wanted in a book, but the, I didn't know if the, I was going to get the book, would I order it? And I thought, well, I would if I could get the audio book today, do you know? <laughs> so right. I, uh, I, I, I used like some of the principles right out of the book. I called Hay House and uh, said, I know this is untraditional and you normally don't even let the audio book out of the bag for a month after the hardback, but I want people to have this now. And they were in agreement. So I said, could we give the audio book free when people buy the hardback? So that way they know the hardback's coming, but it doesn't matter when it gets there because mm-hmm. they could have it, be listening to the audiobook today. Mm-hmm. And so this is, I know it might sound like, so you're giving a free audiobook, big deal, but like you got to get in publishing, this doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. The audiobook is a huge revenue stream, you know, to a publisher and generally held back. So I mean, I'm also sharing a little bit because I know you've got 
a lot of folks listening who have books or who are coming out with books this year and might be thinking about the impact and the timing. And so, um, so, you know, it's a little bit of a meta conversation. That's what, what, how I pivoted is we're like, you want this, you could be listening tonight, just buy the book and you'll get the audio book free and you can be learning how to harvest what is it that you already know that you could be making money with and helping people with now? And the book will get there when it does. Mm -hmm. And so it was, uh, it's just, it's like, I think it's an example of a lot of the pivots that businesses are making to say, how can we add generosity right now, but still be a business? Like we're not going to become a hobby. We need to keep making our irresistible offer or we won't have a business, but how can we, instead of stop making our offer and give away the whole store, how can we continue to make our offer for that which we do that does make a difference and add generosity to it? You know, how would I add generosity in this time or given the specific thing that you might offer or sell, you know, what would be a generosity for your customer base and then, you know, add it to the offer. So, so those are some ways that we've been, um, you know, just kind of, making our own decisions about what feels good and right and, and supportive in this time, aside yeah. from routines homeschooling downstairs. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, from this, yeah. <laughs> this thing of, mom's take, on the interview. <laughs> right, right. Take care of the kid. Let, let me, let me ask this then, and I, I want to turn this over to Dean. Um, yeah. So on uh, many, I love marketing podcasts in the past. We've talked a lot about offers and you talk about irresistible offers. You, your, your book, you know, you, you teach people how to lay that out. Dean Jackson has one of the greatest lines I think I've ever heard, which is a, a compelling offer is 10 times more powerful than a convincing argument. Mm -hmm. And I want to kind of have spend a little bit of time here talking about how does one design, what is a, you know, a compelling offer? What's an irresistible offer versus trying to convince people to buy and you're talking about leading with generosity. I mean, me and Dean, again, we've done many episodes where, like I've used education-based marketing for years. When I was a dead broke carpet cleaner in the early 90s, one of the things that I did with advertising before the internet even existed is I would offer a consumer's guide to carpet cleaning, you know, read this guide and discover seven questions, ask a carpet cleaner before invite them in your home, how to avoid four carpet cleaning ripoffs. You know, I, I would teach people how to make a buying decision. And because I was the one providing them with that information, they would have trust and rapport with me. But of course, we had to have an offer. A consumer guide as a standalone doesn't work just as a standalone. You still have to ask somebody to buy something. Uh, and, and me and Dean have had, again, numerous episodes about what if you could not charge for what you're selling? What if you could only get paid on producing a result? So I think we're all, me and Dean, are already wired to lead with generosity. And I think it would be a really valuable thing right now for people that are like, wow, what do you do in this sort of situation? Because, you know, people have heard me say numerous times right now, we're focusing on serving, not selling. But I say that in a certain context, because I'm a big believer in selling. Nothing happens if you don't sell something. And businesses would come to a screeching halt if people weren't buying anything. So the economy and people's jobs in the future uh, relies on, you know, commerce. It relies on people's ability to exchange. So I, I just wanted to, to have both of you give a description of what is an offer. What, how should people listening or watching this right now think about, you know, they're uncomfortable. How do I ask someone for money when some people can't even afford to eat or some people don't even have jobs? And there's a lot of the psychological stuff um, where people don't want to be offensive. And at the same time, they, if they have a staff, if they have a team, if they have clients and customers. So I, I just wanted to kind of dive into that a little bit from both of your perspectives. Mm -hmm. You want to go first, Dean? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> because that's a, that's a thing that you're saying, right, Joe, that everybody's wondering, you know, how can I ask people for money? That's the thing that we're, everybody's afraid of. Everybody sees the downturn and they're wondering, how can I get people to buy my stuff? That's really the mindset that everybody's going around with that. And it's very, when we're in a period of contraction like this, where people are kind of like, you know, we're, they're gathering their uh, stuff. They're wondering what's going to happen. It's very uncertain what's going to go on. And in a traditional sense, when people are approaching people, just if we imagine that every person is really running their own internal business, if they treat it like that, that they're, you're asking them 
to buy something from you that you can deliver a good or a service or uh, whatever it is that you do. And we're going to, I have used this analogy that it's like approaching a company through the purchasing department, trying to convince them to write you a purchase order to then in the future deliver what it is that you've convinced them that they need. And that a lot of people, a lot of businesses have put a hold on no new purchase orders right now. We're not buying anything. And they're all rallied in the in their collective boardrooms asking the same question, how can we sell stuff? Right? We're not, I'm not, we're not buying anything, but how can we sell stuff? And that I if you look at it, that everybody's desire for the result that you can create for them is even more amplified now, especially if that result that you can deliver them is more business for them or a better outcome for them or something that they value highly, that if we were to think about, instead of approaching through the purchasing department, that we're going around the back and we're approaching these businesses from the receiving dock, the receiving dock is wide open and ready to receive all that you can deliver to them. They're ready for results. People are ready for new people to join their program or for new people to ask for them to help with their service. And so it's really just this mindset of thinking and looking at the assets that you have in your business in your world in your and I call you business your enterprise whether it's you or whether it's a uh, hundred or a thousand people your enterprise is your business vehicle whether it's a solopreneurship or a, a practice or whatever it is that your enterprise is in the business of delivering results for people and if you really get um, in tune with what the actual assets that you have, what the the result that you can create for somebody. And you realize that if you can do it for them, it goes all the way back to asking the clarifying question of what would you do if you only got paid if your client gets the result? Whether that's going to be your offer or not, it's understanding what you would do, what you're capable of doing for somebody if you were only going to get paid when they get the result. And I, I say that to people all the time and they're, they're, the immediate fear that they have is that the only offer they can make is a results in advance offer and only get paid later. But I just pointed out that if we look at the polarities of offers, that if on one end, we've got an offer that says all sales final, no refunds, no exchanges, which is 100% protecting you from your uh, from the buyer buyer beware kind of thing, and on the other end is don't give me any money right now. Let me go ahead and get to work and get the result for you, and then when we get the result, then you give me the money. That every offer on the spectrum is going to fit between those two poles, and I'm just saying that the closer you can get to the no payment, no, uh, you're going to certainly get the result and then pay is a, uh, is a big win. You know, that's just thinking that way is really going to help jumpstart the stuff. Cause one of the things you have an excess capacity of right now is time. You have an excess capacity in your ability to your capacity to deliver results for people, you know, And so you may as well deploy that on a basis that's going to deliver results so that you can get the the money um, by doing it. I think it's going to shift a lot of, uh, I think it's going to shift a lot of stuff. Yeah. I I love it as a mental framework too. Like I want to highlight for our own listeners that are here, you know, live today. Dean's not saying you need to go to a results only. He's saying like, think that way. Yeah. So you could really tap into your brain in a new way instead of, I think, tell me if I've got this right, Dean, you know, cause I'm love, I'm loving this concept for myself yeah. too. As I think of our own offers that, you know, if you think that way, you're going to prompt your brain to think of some, some, some 
you know, to really, really look at where yeah. you truly deliver results. Like that's what it is. It really takes away at the fluff. And because, that's what and it does. You not it, actually make the offer to be only paid on results, but you're yeah. going to make an offer that you know you can deliver, and yeah. and you know that's going to be your strongest offer. And that's it. It's yeah. the thinking exercise of identifying silently at first. What would you do if yeah. it was ruled that yeah. you could only get paid by after you deliver the result? What would you do? And yeah. often when you do that, when you realize, well, if I'm only going to get paid on the result, then you're going to remove all the layers of fluff that we add on to things to make it appear more valuable when the reality is if it's just about getting the result, well, I would just do this. That's really the thing that when you look at it, when you take on the responsibility of doing it, right, it's so much easier. It would be in a lot of cases so much easier for you to actually get the result for people, right? As Ah, opposed to teach them how to do it and be frustrated in their misexecution of your instructions. And right? it keeps us from getting too wide sometimes into all those areas that are really not ours, yeah. um, you know, where we should really, we, the, the client journey with us is done and it's time to refer to yeah. something where that is their best result. Well, I, I, wanna, think- um, I love that. And I like, there's a couple of things you said about, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to do that, if either physically make your offer that way or use it as a thinking exercise, then, you know, and this comes right out of the, the, for, the meant for more formula of turning your knowledge into profit. Mm-hmm. Like, well, if you're, if you're only going to, if you're going to think that way, that I'm going to, you know, deliver an offer, like, and really think through what would that offer be that it would only be paid on the result. Then the two steps I would take out of the meant for more formula you'd want to do you put these two together is you would want to make sure you could articulate your result, Mm -hmm. right? Like you better be able to say what your result is that you provide Mm -hmm. for people in a way that like opens the eyes and and the ears and leans the people lean in that need that result. Right. And so if it's an intangible, like you're giving that result through your expertise or your coaching or even your service, you're not shipping a product. Right. And not only would you need to be able to articulate that result in a way that your ideal client would lean forward, but you'd also be able to need to make it feel very tangible, right? Mm-hmm. So how do we make it feel tangible? So the other step is you would make sure that it had a proven system, um, a roadmap, a formula, some kind of a framework that that they could hear from you and be like, oh, yeah, um, I see that I, I hear the result you're saying. It exactly matches the one that I'm thinking in my head, you know, and I see that you have a proven path for me to get there. Mm-hmm. And those are part of, you know, for those of you that are already on the journey or want to go on the journey of going what is it that I already know that I'm already getting great results for myself or other people in that, you know, I want to at this time either help more people with it. So I want to be able to mm-hmm. say it in a way that people will get it so I can help more people or, and, or I also want to be able to make money while I'm doing it. I want it mm-hmm. to be my offer. And for a lot of developed businesses, like what you guys see in genius network, you know, the level of business um, that I've been having this conversation with is actually opening up the thought um, of, of like entire income streams of things that you're getting asked all the time for anyway. Mm-hmm. People want to pick your brain about, you know, how did you grow your following so fast or how did you, you know, downshift and really take care of your people? Like there's things that each and every one of us are doing already that others are noticing. And mm-hmm. it sort of might have been a sideline thing until now when it might be like Dean said, the amplification for what you have is 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 a hundred X, do you know, like people need those results, those transformations that mm-hmm. each of us may be getting very easily because it's sort of our, our thing, but there's things that are, um, I'm going to assert there are things that are easy for each one of us. So like there's things that are easy for me, but mm-hmm. baffle other people. Right. I'll call that my unique value. Yes. Like mine was in the area of sales. I was telling Joe the last time we spoke, like since I was little, it didn't matter if it was Girl Scout cookies or, you know, somebody, somebody's joining a new direct sales or multi-level organization. Like I'd always get the call. 
hey, can you help me sell this? They're basically saying, you know, how do I make an offer? I couldn't see it because it was so easy for me. It was like at the tip of my nose. So I couldn't see it. It was too close to it. But once I saw that I had a unique gift that it was like, I'm like, yeah, make your offer. It's a disservice not to. Like, that's my natural state. And for most people, it's like, ah, sales, you can't do that. That, You know, Um, Mm -hmm. that when I saw that my orientation, it was easy for me, but hard for others. You know, that's what created $40 million of sales from a home-based business was just staying in that place, right? Mm -hmm. In that lane. And so um, we each have that is really what I'm here to say is that Mm -hmm. every single person I believe is sitting on a gold mine. Yes. You know, there's a lot of people going into financial hardship and I look around and I'm like, everybody had my sister-in-law who does chooses doesn't, who doesn't work, but she is out there right now helping people with her superpower, which is online shopping. Do you know, like she's yeah. the one you call if you're like, how do I get whole foods to deliver and when, and how do you game it? And do you know, like she has all, she knows what time and how to set the appointment and how many things you need to put in your car and, you know, people would pay for that right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let me, let me ask you guys something, because this is what's kind of going through my head at the moment. Um, and this may sound um, a little weird. What I'm noticing. I like it with, already. Yeah, I, like, I, I was at the edge of our I like it already. Thing, but <laughs> yeah. Like the setup here, a little cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you think of the, the term meant for more, if you just think of more, if you look at meant, meaning, what you're trying to do, the people that seem to be engaged are engaged in something, and it's usually right now of service or helping or art or creativity or exercise or some entrepreneurial endeavor, some pursuit of something that they are trying to master, having to handle something that they didn't handle before and now all of a sudden either by volunteer volunteering of their own choice or being forced into it. Um, people are either pushed into like to use my buddy, Stephen Pressfield, who wrote the book, the war of art, you know, resistance, whenever you hit risk, you know, it doesn't take an enormous amount of effort to do something that's a lower level activity. But if you're going to pursue a 12 step program, write a book, start an entrepreneurial enterprise, start a, a yoga practice, you're going to get hit with resistance. And I think right now, pants, right? what's that? <laughs> Wear pants. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, these higher consciousness activities like putting on pants every day. And so what I, I, I spent about an hour and a half last night talking to Jay Abraham. And I said, you know, the opening of the documentary that one of my clients put together for me, which is my movie connected, uh, the, which is the Joe Polish story. It's not even out yet, but it, people can watch the trailer at connectedthemovie.com. And one of the first things I say at the beginning of the movie is this Charles Bukowski, the, you know, the, the crazy alcoholic poet who was a brilliant writer. He said, you know, it was along the lines of take the writer away from the typewriter and all you have left is a sickness which started him writing in the first place. And it's, it's kind of a, an interesting thing because, you know, I, I tend to apply that to entrepreneurs, you know, take the entrepreneur away from business and all you have left is a sickness which got them starting a business in the first place. Now, it, it, saying it in a way of like, we are all spending our ambitions on something. Personally, I think the reason you're enthusiastic right now, Lisa, is because you have a book, you have something to put your energy towards. And when people don't have anything to put their energy towards a relationship or purpose, or even how do I deal with being alone, like utterly alone, right? Uh, like I don't have family, I don't have a partner, I'm single right now, right? And it's interesting that I'm alone. And I'm in, I'm a guy who's, you know, openly been in recovery for many, many years. And I feel pretty good right now. I mean, I don't feel great, but I feel pretty good. And I spend a lot of my day talking to people that struggle with addictions. I mean, several hours a day, I'm interacting or engaging with people that are struggling with addiction and seeing people losing their shit. And really, you know, which we, I've talked about is a couple of friends, you know, uh, that, that I have, have had partners that have tried to commit suicide in the last now three weeks now. And what I'm noticing is the people that actually can find a, a place to, everyone's been uprooted. And if you can put your roots into a pot that feels like there's something there, then there's a semblance of, of you have some ability to manage or control your life, even with the difficulty. But if people are just running around like raw nerve endings and they don't know where to go, they're, they're kind of losing it. 
And I think there's a lot to be said without overstating it, that if you're met for more and you sat down and say, what am I met for? Or if I was met for more, what would that be? And you use like our friend Keith Cunningham's thinking time exercise. And if if everyone got like a notepad, not even a computer, a, a piece of paper and said, what am I meant for? What do I really feel like I'm put on this plant? And just brainstorm and pick something, especially if you're like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. You know, who are you meant for? You know, to use the Dan Sullivan thing, who do you want to be a hero to? Some people think, oh, I should be in this business or I should be doing this. But going back to like, you know, the uh, eight profit activators, which me and Dean have been, you know, for over a decade now doing I Love Marketing episodes, you know, we have these eight profit activators uh, that are all based on something that Dean created, the before unit, the during unit, and the after unit of a business, um, that the first thing is select a single target market. And if you can't figure out what to do, then the question is, well, who do you want to be a hero to? Who's that target market? What do they want? What are they looking for? Because, you know, you've constructed a whole methodology and a system on how to to sell that. If people can't bring themselves out of that uh, resistance, though, they they just are, they're running around like in their head with like, what the hell do I do? And so I think there's a deeper conversation with when you're worried, when you're scared, when you're fearful, when you're confused, how do you actually find confidence or courage or strength in all of it in order to still forge ahead when things th- seem insurmountable? And I'd almost like to hear your guys' perspective on that because the people that already have a business, that already know what they're selling, yeah, they're having to pivot. Everyone's hearing everyone talk about pivot, but the people out there that are fucking lost, like they're really fucking lost. And if we could just give them a lighthouse, you know, to use our Fred Abbey, she was talking about, like, mm-hmm. what would that be? I'd love to hear you guys talk about that because that, in, 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 if you think of meant for more, that is, that's what it's all about. I think we're all engaged in doing this because we have ambitions. We we're able to do something and we've, we've been able to reach out, but I think a lot of people are stuck right now. And I'd like to help them through that stuckness to whatever degree we can do that on an I love marketing podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, there's a, um, there's so many different frameworks people can choose from. And I think sometimes there's just a divine appointment of the one that gets put in your face when you're in the need. Right. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I'm certainly lit up with because I have a book to, to bring out, but I'm more lit up because inside it is like what you're saying. Um, it, it's a place to start. I think people have the feeling, but they don't know what to do with it. I want to help more. I want to take this thing that maybe I've helped some people in my inner circle and help people beyond. I want to be a hero to not just my kids, but all kids dealing with X, Y, Z or, you know, women or families or, you know, people in financial distress. So I love that side door, you know, instead of the what, like figure out who you want to be a hero to. Um, But if the feeling has come up that, you know, there's something inside you and you even have seen other people's interest in it, um, we, we have something you can go to meantformoregift.com and go forward slash love for the I Love Marketing podcast. So meantformoregift.com forward slash love. And it's, it's called Discover Your Unique Value. And so it's just it's a series of questions that are, um, they're, they're, they don't feel very businessy when you do them because we really just want to put all the, is this going to be a business to, uh, to the side at first? Because some of you may discover your unique value and it's just a more organized and succinct way you can help. And some will want to turn it into a paid offer. So this really applies, you know, to discovering that, that which you are uniquely designed for. Mm-hmm. You know, and we talked earlier, like, what are some areas that are easy for you yet hard for others? And we help you take some inventory right. with that, like write it down. Um, th- all those places where people want to pick your brain, you know, people say, can I have five minutes of your time, Dean? You know, how do you fill up your seminars so easily? You know, they just want to pick your brain. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is we go for years and years letting people pick our brain because mm-hmm. we just want to help. But there's kind of two flaws in that plan that, that may be worth correcting right now. Like, this could be the time. One of the flaws is that, you know, when we let people pick our brain, generally we just kind of are picking it and giving them what we know as we're talking. It doesn't come out in the most organized and useful way. 
Mm-hmm. So we're trying to help someone and yet we're giving them kind of, you know, 10 pounds of rice in a five pound bag. It's right. not like here it is in a way that you could actually succeed with it. It's just, oh, I did this and then, yeah, and I forgot about that. And right. And so, so the, the two things happen. They, they, they don't really have a way to get the result you got because it's too much and it's in disarray. Um, and, and also, you know, they don't really have that much skin in the game. And so in the sales and marketing world, there's a term, you know, when people pay, they pay attention. Mm-hmm. So, so many times we'll just, you know, we'll go to give, but they, they do nothing with it. Right. And every time that we say yes, and we let someone pick our brain and generally it's going to be a similar topic area <laughs> over and over that people are coming to you for we, and they do nothing with it. We get a reinforcement that it maybe it really wasn't worth that much. Maybe maybe well, the reality is, Lisa, value. though, that most people aren't going to do anything with it, even when they pay you. But for most people, it makes them feel better that at least they got paid with for them not to do something. And I love that that whole. I just have to like reframe that for people that the often those things like, well, if they pay, they have skin in the game, are really nice external blame shifters that it's easy to take comfort in that when people don't do something that, well, it was all in there. I have, if they just followed the program that they would, uh, that they would get it, you know? And that's kind of this idea of why I say, if you were only going to get paid, if they get the result is that when, when, if you had that level of intention or that level of, of, um, uh, attention that you're paying to people actually getting the result, like that it's easy to disengage. You don't have to follow all the way through for people to get the result. If they've paid you for the journey, you feel like, well, I did all I could. It's it's all there. They just didn't follow through. Well, you're talking of about the offer though. I'm talking about figuring out their unique I'm talking value. About actually like earlier doing. part. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So when you, but when you look at it, we people have this um, this sometimes they have this fire hydrant of help and ability that they could give to people, but they're being forced to meter it out through the garden hose of what they convince can convince people to give them money for up front to do it, right? It's only in their ability to to sell it in a way, right? And it's so, I find that that that's a big frustration for, uh, for people, you know? So knowing what your ability is and then seeking out the best people to get that result for, I, I was, it's been amazing to watch the, um, I was talking the other day about Charles Koch and uh, the Koch brothers, how, you know, when they took over their father's business in the 60s, that it was worth $23 million. And now they've grown it by 5,000 fold to $105 billion on the back of essentially building the whole business around getting results for other people and partnering with those people to share in that bigger um, the bigger result that you can uh, that you can get. It's an exciting thing because I always look at it that sometimes this is the big learning um, that I've had over time with this is that often it's less expensive for you to get the result for somebody than it is to convince them to give you money to get the result. And it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, that's powerful. If you yeah. just know what to uh, do for them to, uh, deliver the the result it's pretty uh pretty amazing well let me say something though because what there's two parts though right there's like yeah, yeah. people figuring out what is an area that i'm getting results or that people are seeking results from me for and, yeah. I, and I want to take like example you know there's people right now trying to figure out what to do around the college process right like yeah. my son's in 10th grade uh vivian and mike koenig's son is is actually in 12th grade with offers to college. Yeah. And there's some people that are like navigating that that are in the business, but only used to do it behind the closed doors of public education. 
mm-hmm. who now can take what they know and be able to, you know, consult or offer yes. that kind of advice that would have never seen themselves as a marketer or a salesperson. Right. But, the, you know, I'm seeing this very real time, the meant for more feeling, do you know, of right. like, wow, I have an opportunity to help a lot more people right now. What would be the steps I would take? Yeah. Right. And this is happening in health right now because people are in their homes. Relationships are so much going on with their interpersonal right. relationships from parent to child or and and so then we've got all the magic of like the different possibilities of how do you take that and turn that into an offer, which you right. know what you're sharing. Um, but I was just kind of going a little bit further back to say mm-hmm. there's stuff that um, is kind of laying around the shop, <laughs> this shop, right? <laughs> that um, that I think a lot of people could turn into they take for granted. They realize, yeah, they take their knowledge for granted that they don't realize. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's really valuable to somebody else. Well, no. let me say this though: in terms of what Lisa's saying, when you say take for granted, Dean, yeah. if Our own someone, knowledge if, right? if someone that everybody knows, yeah, if someone just um, you know is constantly at the beck and call of anyone that wants to quote unquote, pick your brain, which is like picking your pocket and you don't value that, then you're not going to translate that into money because you're not placing value on it. So I think there's two sides of this. One is understanding, you know, the psychology of how, um, you know, how people uh, perceive things, how they perceive value. The other is how you perceive it and how you organize it and how you package it. Because, you know, marketing is, unique packaging, it's bundling and unbundling. And, you know, part of it is believing that you actually have something to share. And if you're able to see that uh, translated into a result for someone over and over and over again, it reinforces it. Uh, The bigger thing though, is if you never take an opportunity to sell it and you just constantly give it away, you don't package it, then there's no way for you to feel like, oh, you know, I'm not, because there's so many talented people that are incredible that make no money and there's a lot of shysters and scummy marketers that package up a great pitch but they have a terrible product and they still somehow manage to enroll people into it because they're believable so the question is is how do you mix you know really useful valuable result producing stuff not from what your opinion is but from the person actually buying it mixed in with a compelling offer, which is what I go back to the irresistible offer, the compelling Mm -hmm. offer. And I think, and and, and if I think if that can be, if you can nail that, you've given yourself an incredible advantage. So let's, how do, how do you nail that? How do we go further with what we've talked about here? Because I'd love for the, the listener to be able to get a better gist of it. Or, you know, of course, I mean, I know when they get your book, Lisa, if they do get your book and read it, listen to it, that you, you walk them through that, but I'd love to share some of that now. When they get your book, uh, if when we're manifesting it, I'd, I'd say it almost have to go back. We I'd go back in the formula versus like toward the end where the offer is because you know, um, like we all know when we speak or we make a presentation, so much of how the close goes is how the positioning goes in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? right. So like if the positioning goes well, the close goes well, but so many people just want to go, well, how do I make an irresistible offer? How do I do the close? And when we talk about our own unique value, it's a little bit of a different math equation, but same rules apply. So the first step in the meant for more formula is actually making peace with sales. Mm -hmm. Before you even go to discover your own unique value, there's a whole couple of chapters, like one's called, um, you know, wake up, my friend, we're all selling something. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, that's the first chapter in that, you know, because it's the realization that whether you're my 13 year old daughter trying to sell me on a trip to Lake Tahoe this summer, you know, and uh, that, that, you know, I should drive all the friends or should the other dad drive? Like there's a whole sales job going on right now around that, uh, you know, assuming we can get out of our houses and do those things. Um, So my daughter picked up the first chapter and just had all these illuminations in her whole life of all the places that, you know, she is making it, having influence. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, the next chapter in making peace with sales is the first person that we have to sell is guess who ourselves, you know, and that's the, the conversation that goes along with making that compelling or irresistible offer. Because if, if we are not sold and see the evidence that we can get results, that we can transmit our knowledge and in a way that somebody else could get a result, then we can go into the bigger game of like, okay, we'll package it up in a way that, you know, um, is uh, promises a result or only gets paid for results. So it's just, it's starting a little earlier in the process than a lot of the places that you are already meeting people, um, you know, that are ready to market. 
Uh, but, you know, I just think it's timely um, because there, there are gifts that we all have that are needed more than ever, you know, yep. and the sales job always starts with selling ourselves on our own value. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you were talking about just if people are feeling stuck or frozen or what do I do? Um, I think, you know, one thing they can do is they can, you can go on the path to discover your unique value. Even if you're already out there with a super successful business, you might go through this little mini course and find some a gem that you didn't realize, but like it gets illuminated for you. Um, and the other kind of side door that I found with this idea is, uh, is the idea of following your inspirations, taking inspired action. You know, this word gets thrown around a lot, just like inspired action, inspired action. You know, everybody's talking about it. But like, what does that mean? How do you, what does you actually do and why would you do it? Mm -hmm. And I found when it comes to taking your knowledge and turning it into profit and discovering what is your, what is your unique value, that you get inspirations. We all get these little like, I should reach out to this person or I should help that person or I should contribute there or make that call or stop doing this. Sometimes there are things to stop doing. And uh, I found that if you, if you I have a little formula, listen, act, trust. That's my formula for inspired action. Listen, act, trust. And the faster you can like listen or hear the tap, the inspiration, you know, like catch that momentary thing and then act like you close the gap on the, okay, I, I had the thought I should, uh, you know, Venmo my nanny 50 bucks because I haven't used her at all this week because the kids are home and she probably needs it. Like follow that inspiration, right? The yeah. faster you close that gap, I've seen two, and then trust is like, trust what you did. Don't second guess. But the faster you can close that gap between listen and act, it, I just had this insight recently on an interview. It's not just about, yes, you'll have fulfillment and an awesome life and feel like you're really making a difference. But what happens is, it's a clue to your unique value, you know, your million dollar value, because the inspirations I'm going to get are coming through my lens of the value that I have. The ones that Dean's going to get and Joe's going to get are going to come from their particular orientation. Mm -hmm. So if I'm constantly acting on those and I'm doing that, you know, every day for the next two weeks, three weeks, I'm going to look back on a string of contributions or things I stopped doing or just guidance that came um, from an inspired place, whatever your orientation, you know, God, the upstairs team, higher self, um, trusted source. But, but I'm going to have had a string of experiences that came from inspiration. And in many times, it can be a side door to finding your purpose, your passion, your unique value, that sometimes the direct route been looking for my purpose for 10 years, but I can't find it. It's just like the front door didn't work. So yeah. try the side door. <laughs> right. That's you know, what's, right. what's interesting about like one thing that came up with what you're just saying was um, I have a, uh, a guy in my hundred K group named John Ratliff. You probably know John, he sold his last company for $65 million. And we did a whole training course I did with him for two days. Cause I wanted to learn what he knows about how to exit right. a company because everyone either intentionally strategically or accidentally is going to exit their company. They're either going to go out of business, they're going to sell it and get ripped off or not do a very good job, or they're going to turn it over to family members that may do a good job or may uh, run it into the ground. And so one of the most important sales and maybe only the only sale that some entrepreneurs will ever make is, is the sale of their own company. And so we did this whole program about how do you set up a company to run it as if you're going to sell it, even if you don't have any plans on doing that, because you're simply going to run your company more effectively. And then what do you do after you've sold the company? Because a lot of entrepreneurs, their entire identities are tied up into what it is that they do. And when they sell a company, a lot of them go off the rails, right? Which is why you see an identity crisis happening right now. It's not just a pandemic. People's identities have been completely shifted. And one thing he talks about in that program that we did, we haven't released it yet, but we're going to. And it's, um, it's funny. I got a lot of things I haven't released yet. So uh, he, he talks about Rembrandt's in the attic, that if you were selling a home for $2 million and one person knew, and you didn't even know that there was a Rembrandt in the attic uh, and the other person didn't, you would know how much more valuable that, that house was, right? And I think what I'm hearing you say is a lot of Rembrandts in the attic. Like people have these values, these things, because, you know, one of the questions I had for you is how can someone listening to this turn their knowledge into income and what would you say are the first steps? So you've been talking a little bit about that. And I think that would be uh, in the short period of time we have left, uh, give me a Scooby snack on, on what someone – 
Uh, if, for those that don't know what Scooby Snacks are, you can look it up online if you're too if you're too uh, young for that. But uh, you know, what wh- what's something that they could think about? Because I think there's a lot of people that have this value, but they're not present to it. I love that analogy. I'm gonna like I'm gonna borrow the Rembrandts in the attic. I will, I will credit you, but I I um. You know, Robert Allen, another best-selling author, he calls it your piece of cake. What's your piece of cake, right? That could be your your Rembrandt in the attic, another great term. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I think what's so fascinating, the Scooby Snack, is what you said before that cool Rembrandt in the attic, is that here's this guy. He sells his company for $65 million, did you say? Right. Right? So, I mean, does he really need to work on his unique value? But, but Joe didn't say it exactly like this, but it's all I could think is, Joe wanted to pick his brain about how he set up the company for the, that big of an exit. So Joe, you know, interviewed him and set up a structure for him to, to start to pull. Well, first I did this and then I did that. And you would set it up like this. And these are all the things you would do to set your company up for a big exit, whether you were planning to exit or not. Right. So that, you know, in the meant for more formula, turn, we turn that into what we call your unique branded system. Some people call it a framework, but that could be turned into a system that others could follow. And here's the thing, Dean, um, I, you know, curious your thoughts on this, but even if he was only able to pick 10% of what he knew, Mm-hmm. You know, would you be okay with a $6.5 million exit? Right. <laughs> right? So like, so I know that all the stuff I know about sales conversion, there's so much I do naturally that I don't even know I do that the level of unconscious competence. Mm-hmm. Right. But let's say I've, you know, over the last 10 years with all of our sales conversion systems, I've picked 20% of what I know is conscious to me. And I put it into systems that now, you know, all these entrepreneurs have followed all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. It's not everything, but it's still enough to get a great result, Mm -hmm. right? And and I think the meant for more journey is that continued journey of like, how much more can I distinguish that I could, you know, offer up more, get even better results, help people accelerate their results. I think it's a, it's a journey. We call it the meant for more journey, right? We we do, Mm -hmm. you did the initial digging, excavating for this exit, you know, unreleased, yet to be released exit um, workshop. So you did the initial excavating. Once he teaches it or you guys release it, people are going to have questions. There's going to be a next level of figuring out what he knows that he didn't say. And then there'll be people that actually go out to execute and he'll see the next level of, oh, I forgot forgot to tell him about the insurance, you know, or whatever it was. Um, So so I think that we're going on a journey. um, And, uh, you know, discovering your unique value is an early part. Uh, making peace with sales has to happen if you're going to turn it into uh, an irresistible offer. So these are all pieces of the journey. And we put them into a five-step process in meant for more. If you're just like, I think there's something in me and I want to go on the journey, um, then you'll probably love the book, the stories, the entrepreneurs, the people that, you know, are in all these different kinds of businesses that you're yeah. like, really, you make money doing that? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but for the person's own unique value, um, when you're working in that space, you'll often have the feeling, as I know the three of us do, am I really getting paid for this? Right. You know, you'll be working with someone and think, I, I, I enjoy this. One of the, me, you know? yeah, yeah, no, it's, and that's a, it's a great point too, because when you do find your flow, you kind of have those feelings. And so, uh, Dean, you better say something smart here because Lisa was just sharing some good stuff. That is good stuff. Now, one of the things that often when people get into sharing their knowledge, there's a feeling that I need to, I'm, I'm here, I've accomplished all of this, and I need to turn around, I need to look backwards and bring people who don't know the stuff that I know to my level up to my level. So we're looking, this is the the kind of traditional mindset, if you think about it like that, even though it's not spoken like, like that. Down, this up is, up, hey, I need to look down and I need to up, bring yeah. people up as opposed to, and, and people who are doing less than you, that mm-hmm. you're trying to, to bring them up, as opposed to taking what you know, taking at the highest level, the things that you're, see, it's part of the thing is when, what are you so certain about that you could get a result for people is who's the most valuable person that you could do that for. Like when you look at what you've done, you have a heart for people and you love to, to help uh, people and everybody kind of gets that sense. 
But there's another level of things where if you look at it, that the things that you take for granted, your ability to set up a sales system or to show people how to employ sales in their own things, what would it be like for a a bigger company, companies that are uh, bigger than yours to have your sales system installed in their business that's an execution business. And I've just been discovering that for myself too, that that's something. <laughs> that's that a big we, more conversation. That's absolutely. Like, that's the whole thing. Is the thing <laughs> how could you provide? Yeah. I think about it where you look at little things like, um, you know, Geek Squad is a great story, actually. We all know about Geek Squad, but it started out as just one location, one people doing something for that. But that was the perfect thing for Best Buy to deploy through all of their um, all of their stores. So you start to think about who would be the who would who would have the best outcome if they knew the stuff that I know. Who would be that that person? And that's you know, if you talk about your Keith Cunningham stuff, thinking your thinking time. You know, what if I'm meant for more? What what more am I meant for? But to really go with that is what's the biggest version of what I know how to do. It's like I, I got an idea for Lisa, and I actually think you should do a meant for more meetup or something. And you have people that take your book listen to your stuff, come up with their thing and they literally start using it and they start sharing what people, what their more is. And the template for it is they need to get your book. They need to share it with other people and they need to share what it is they're doing. Because I think you're, you're at the, you're right at the cusp of being a catalyst for something. And I think that would be really valuable right now. And I, I would actually, you know, try to put this out there right now that if that's something, maybe try a meant for more sort of, uh, you know, virtual event and people have to show up having read your book. They, they show up um, with what, the, what their more is, what they're looking for, who they're helping, what their value proposition is, how they're taking your that's process great. and formula and using it and doing that. And if, if people like latch onto that, I'm happy to promote that and have oh, and right, maybe yeah. even do like a co I love market. Cause we're trying it too. We're going to do an, I love marketing virtual and maybe we do a virtual with, with Lisa and we have a met for more virtual combined <laughs> thing. And we just got and have people actually not just hear us talk about this stuff, but demonstrate it because they have shown us that they are hearing what we're saying and they're doing something with it. That's, you know, it's like a movement, really, what you're talking about. Right. You know, I love marketing movement or meant for more movement. Um, yeah, we have kind of, you know, our mini version right now is our, what we call our VIP launch team. And, you know, these are people that are like, I want this not just for me, but I'm looking across at my college student who's home right now or my husband or my wife. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm not even through chapter one and they need to read the book. Right. You know? So I think one of the reasons we, we sold out early on Amazon was people buying more than one copy. Um so, yeah, I love that. Thank you. And I'm happy to participate, you know, just uh, remind me of the time and day when I can write it down. Yeah, well, <laughs> Unicorn pen. Um, I, I want to make sure I didn't pop out resources that I didn't tell people how to get. Do you mind if I just... Oh, no, no. Yeah, tell, let's, let's do this. We'll wrap up by... Reference points, but... Um, well, let me say this. Let me say it this way, Lisa. Uh, one of the things me and, me and Dean have said jokingly is like, you can actually hear what other people have to offer here free of charge. You can look at their sales funnel. You can look at how they're doing it. So yeah, go ahead and tell people how to get their book, why they should get their book, where they need to go, how you've bundled stuff up together in it. And not only do we recommend people get it because it's not like it's going to cost you a lot of money. It's the cost of a book. And if you're in a position where you can, by all means do it. But also Lisa, this is one of the current people that are actually selling things right now in the midst of this. And it would probably be smart to see Lisa's who's this is her expertise is to see her thinking and her design on how she's packaging up and offering what it is she's doing. I think that's helpful there aside from just getting the book and the materials and the course and in the audio and all of the, the things that you're about to mention, but I want to frame it that way because I think it's just a smart thing. Yeah. So go ahead. Do you, yeah. Yeah. Begin. Uh, 
it's um, very meta. So I will uh, tell you my irresistible offer and you want to be learning the irresistible offer. And I really shared it right when we first came out. And I know um, for most of you, you're just hearing the audio, but if you are with us live on one of the shares we're doing, um, if you go to lisasasevich.com forward slash love, that will tell me that you are with the I Love Marketing Tribe. So, or you heard this today there. So lisasasevich.com forward slash love. Um, and uh, you'll see our page that shows the book and tells a little bit about it. And if you scroll on down, it has all the different booksellers where you can get it. But really, you can go get Meant for More by Lisa Sasevich at any of your favorite online booksellers. And, you know, some days they're in stock, some days they're not. Shipping's a little weird right now. But what we have done to make the offer irresistible and that if you're feeling inspired, you can do what I taught earlier, take inspired action right now, is you can enter your order number at lisasasevich.com forward slash love. Um, and you put it in the little form. So you have to scroll down on that page and um, watch for an email from us it's going to give you the code to get into our online business academy. And in our online business academy, generally it's just people who have paid for courses over the years that are $2,000 or more. Right now, we've got a, a special spot in there where you can download the audiobook today. So you can listen to it on you know, Audible or wherever you like to listen to your audiobook. You can listen to me talk three times faster. And, um, <laughs> and then you also are going to get um, the Discover Your Unique Value mini course. So you know, that'll also be inside the Business Academy. And you can start to ask, there's five different exercises. Where do people want to pick your brain? What's easy for you and hard for others? And three more that just get you to see things that you, you can't, it's hard to see because they're easy for you. It's close to you. And you will see when I say you're sitting on a gold mine and you're going, where Lisa, I don't see the gold mine. You will see the gold mine. And then it will be up to you if you want to follow the steps in the formula to really mine the gold. So there's a companion workbook. Um, we're going to be walking you through like a uh, 30 days of support. I used to call it a challenge, but I don't think I'm going to use that word anymore. We have enough challenges right now in our lives. <laughs> so I'm gonna, there, we'll walk you through some calls where you can come on and say, hey, what about this and what about that? Um, so, so that's what we've got going on right now. LisaSasevich.com forward slash love. Buy the book. Enter your order number. Get the audio book free and a whole bunch of other uh, support on this journey that we're talking about. Um, so yeah, yeah, I can't wait to share and you may want to get to um, because it is the kind of book that you start to think about those people in your life that have potential. That girl, <laughs> good. that girl good. Yeah, you know what? No, that's great. And by the, by the way, the word potential just means you haven't done it yet. Mm. So if you've got, everyone has potential, but you have to generate it. You have to tap into it. You have to take action to do it. You don't just sit around and think that, oh, because I have potential and because I want to do something <coughs> that somehow is going to translate into it. So <clears throat> the, the action and, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to be as sensitive about this as I can. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of in the middle of a war uh, for a lot of people. And the, the fact is, uh, tap into the resourcefulness that you have within you if you're feeling uh, scared, if you're feeling fearful, if you're feeling broken. There are, tap into things that uh, give you energy, that, that give you confidence. Confidence feels good. Courage doesn't feel good. And a lot of people right now have got to operate with courage. Uh, and it's, you have to work through the burn in the same way that if you take on an exercise routine and it, your muscles are sore, your body hurts, you're hating life. Yeah, exactly. You're, you know, the reason most people don't do it is they can't handle the soreness. They can't handle the, the, the burn and, and you have to work through the burn right now. So, you know, and don't burn. burn comes because of the stretch. You stretched your muscles, right? So wow. it's about stretching yourself. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I just want to encourage people to to do that, and we're hoping that the uh, you know this this Facebook Live, this podcast episode was inspiring for you and will help you. And certainly, uh, we hope that you get a what's what's the website one more time, Lisa? Um, I just say go to lisasasevich dot com forward slash love. And, you know, hit the Men for More tab. It's all there. Um, the audiobook free offer, Hay House is allowing us to give it away free right now. Um, so, you know, I, I grab it, grab it soon. And, um, but we'll keep the Discover Your Unique Value mini course up for anyone. So if you hear then this way down the line, when that's gone, um, you know, don't worry, still come on over and, uh, and you'll get that. I want to give a, a plug, by the way, for um, the place where I really got to know these guys, uh, Genius Network, you know, having spent five years there myself and really 
the most important connections I have in my business life um, are largely from Genius Network. Uh, I know a lot of my tribe listening spent, you know, many of them years in our own mastermind that we had for a decade and that, you know, that's not available right now. And a lot of them are at the level. A lot of you guys are at the level to consider Genius Network. So um, for, for our people who happen to be watch partying in today, I just, uh, you definitely have to have a certain qualification uh, in your business. And I don't know what they are that these days. But um, but I just I want to say I've, I have done made so many important personal and business relationships that you know last a lifetime from all the years in Genius Network. So uh, I want to give it a big plug. And uh, being here today is you know yet another result of those great relationships. So thank you. No, th- th- thank you so much. Yeah, and if anyone has interest in that, just go to geniusnetwork.com. And and the, one of the things that I say is that any problem in the world can be solved with the right Genius Network. And even if you are not in, I have a company called Genius Network, and it's a it's a group for people that have a million dollar or more uh, business. Uh, what I think of it though, is that uh, have a genius network in your group. And, and those of you that have never had Lisa as part of your genius network, now here's a way to actually get Lisa, right? Because mm-hmm. I, re- I really do, because that's what a genius network is. Not just, ne- no one wants to do networking. What I want, if I'm going to go connect with people, I want to connect with people that have skills and capabilities and genius in areas that I don't. And that's why I created genius network for that exact reason. And certainly you were a huge part of of that, and and gave so many great talks and things like that, and and so I pre I really appreciate the, the the plug, and I appreciate you you being on here, and yeah, that's what happens when you uh, start aligning yourself with other people. You can go out and and co- collaboratively uh, create uh, great things. So thank you, Lisa, and uh, uh, Dean. Anything you want to say about Lisa? Because no one really cares about you. Nobody cares about me. It's, that's the way it is, Lisa. I think you did great. That was fantastic. But I really can't leave without commenting that, Joe, your head today has a beautiful matte finish. I don't know whether you're just like calm or whether you've toned the lights down, but it's a it's a matte finish tonight instead of the high gloss that I've been seeing lately. I don't know what you're seeing because I see like shininess on my head right well, now. It doesn't look well, like maybe, uh, maybe it's the Zoom feature that touches up your appearance. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knows it better than a comment on a woman's hair, so he, he's directing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Lisa, you look fabulous, as always. Uh, I, I learned I grew today from our conversation, Dean, and when I finally caught hold, I'm glad we kind of went through it a few times. When I Absolutely. finally caught hold on what you were contributing, yeah. I got the contribution at such a deep level. Um, so true. thank you. I, I grew today in my own meant for more journey, so thank you. Awesome. Well, I I will say this to everyone who's been watching. Thank you so much. If you know any business owners out there or anyone that is met for more that needs to watch this, we did post it on Facebook. Go ahead and share it. Her name is Lisa Sasevich. The book is called Met for More. What's the subtitle above? The Proven Formula to Turn Your Knowledge into Profits. And really, we wouldn't be able to call it the Proven Formula if it wasn't for our tribe who's listening because they proved it over the last 10 years. Mm, so, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. all the <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. As always, always a pleasure talking with you. And to everyone in Cloudlandia, as Dean uh, Jackson says it, uh, make the most of this. We hope you're safe. Uh, we hope you're doing as best you can. And uh, really think about what you're meant for more and utilize the process that Lisa laid out and read her book and do something with it. And we will talk to you on the next episode of uh, I Love Marketing. So thank you. you. All right. See you guys. Bye.